Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Prepping by Faith. And today I just wanted to talk to you guys about these diesel shortages. I know a lot of people are covering this already. It's a really big deal. It's a really big concern. And I just wanted to come at this from a little bit of a different angle. So I came across this article. It is on Freight Waves and it is called um, Why the Northeast is Quietly Running Out of Diesel. So I wanted to share this with you guys. And I'm not going to read you the whole thing. I'm just going to hit some highlights. But this was the question that I had is why is this happening in the first place? I mean, you would think that if we were going to have shortages, we would be having gasoline shortages since we know that diesel is actually a byproduct of gasoline and nobody is really talking about that. We're only kind of talking about the diesel aspect of it. So they're saying that the East Coast of the U.S. is reporting its lowest seasonal diesel inventory on record, and some trucking companies are spooked. The East Coast typically stores around 62 million barrels of diesel during the month of May, according to the Department of Energy. Um, but as of Friday, that region of the U.S. is reporting under 52 million barrels. So the sharp increase of diesel prices has been a major stressor in America's $800 billion trucking industry since the beginning of 2022. And we're seeing prices as high as $5.90, up 63% from the beginning of this year. And so we're going to scroll down here and I'm going to talk to you about these things that they are seeing as the issues contributing to this. So it says the East Coast has lost half of its oil refineries. So in the past 15 years, the number of refineries in the U.S. East Coast has halved to just seven. The closures have reduced the region's oil processing capacity to just 818,000 barrels per day, per day, down from 1.64 million barrels per day in 2009. So Oil demand is stronger than ever, but they're actually decreasing the amount of oil refineries. And they're saying that some of them have closed um, due to issues that they had in the Great Recession of 2008. And there has also been more recent shutdowns. I guess there was a major Philadelphia refinery that shut down in 2018. And they're blaming a lot of this on these regulations, which doesn't surprise me. So I think a lot of the issues that we're seeing is from this poor decision making and these policies by um, the people at the top of our administration. So they've already known this was going to be an issue. They could see that this was going to happen because if you have cut down and reduced your oil refineries by half, you should have known that you needed to go ahead and bring some more on board, but they're making it very difficult for them to go ahead and open any more refineries. So that is one of the problems. The other is they're saying that it is a financial risk to bring diesel to the Northeast. So they're saying the Northeast has increasingly relied on diesel from the Gulf region. Much of that diesel travels to the Northeast through the famous and much um, adored colonial pipeline which we remember from last year during that ransomware attack. But it takes 18 days for oil to travel on the Colonial Pipeline from its source in Houston to Linden, New Jersey. So they're saying um, that it's kind of risky for traders, and they call that a concept called backwardation. So they're saying that the market condition in which the spot price of commodities like diesel is higher than its future price. So people are not willing to go ahead and ship this off and eat the cost of it. So if they were to buy it at today's prices that are spiked, and then by the time it gets there in 18 days, those prices had come down, they would actually lose money. So that is also a contributing factor in an issue that we're seeing. So and then, of course, we have to blame, you know, the crisis in Ukraine and that situation. But we do know that a lot of it is because we are shipping off our oil to Europe to try to help Europe since they are unable to now get their oil um, from Russia. So we are being asked and tasked with the issue of trying to help out Europe with oil. And in turn, it's causing issues here. And then we don't have enough of this diesel for our own 
trucks and all of our equipment and everything that we need here in the United States. So I just wanted to kind of bring this article to you guys' attention. I'm not sure all of you had seen it. I'm going to go ahead and link it for you guys in the description box so you can read it and check it out. But I had a lot of questions. I was wondering why this was happening myself. So I thought this article did a good job of breaking that down and explaining it. It definitely looks like we're going to have this issue for the long haul. It does not seem like it's going to be a short term problem. So unless they're going to stop exporting so much oil to Europe, or they're going to go ahead and start trying to bring on some more oil refineries. I don't know how we are going to fix this issue. It seems like it's going to continue to spiral out of control. And so I would encourage you guys to continue to prep it to the best of your abilities, put back as much as you can. If you guys can store up a little bit of extra gasoline, I know a lot of us don't have room for that and it can be unsafe to store lots of it, but keep your tanks topped off those sorts of things. All we can do is the best we can do. And I just wanted to share this information with you. I know a lot of people have reported on it, but this article definitely caught my eye as something that is kind of explaining in greater detail what is taking place and why it is taking place. So if you guys have enjoyed this video today, please give me a like, share, and subscribe. And remember to pray, prep, and put God first. God bless.